Do you know how fast regular planes travel? It's usually around 500 knots, which is 575 miles an hour. This may seem fast, but it takes just over eight hours of flight time from London to New York. NASA seems to feel it's pretty slow, and that's why they're trying to speed things up by testing out a supersonic aircraft that goes by the name X-59. What is this aircraft hoping to achieve, and how can it revolutionize air travel? Let's discuss all of that and more in today's video. So stay tuned till the end, as we've got lots to tell you. How long do you think we've had planes? 50, 60 years? Let me tell you, in 1914, the world witnessed a historic moment with the first ever commercial flight conducted by SPT Airlines. This pioneering journey took place between St. Petersburg and Tampa in Florida on a Benoist Type 14 flying boat, a seaplane designed by Thomas Benoist. But that was more than a hundred years ago, and we've made quite a lot of advancements. That 1914 flight had a speed of just 125 miles per hour, and today we have passenger planes that are able to cruise eight times faster. A successful flight meant that the sky was now wide open, and commercial air travel gained momentum with the establishment of companies like KLM and Avianca in 1919. As technology advanced, the post-World War II era witnessed the rise of aviation giants like Pan American World Airways and British Airways. In 1976, the supersonic Concorde, jointly developed by British Aerospace and Aeropostiali, symbolized the pinnacle of innovation. Manufactured in the 1960s, Concorde stood out with its slender design and delta wings, setting it apart from other planes. The sleek plane could fly at twice the speed of sound, reducing transatlantic travel time significantly. Now, the speed of planes is often compared to the speed of sound in a unit called Mach. It's a measure of an aircraft's speed relative to the speed of sound and is used to describe how fast planes move through the air, providing a standardized way to discuss their velocity relative to sound waves. Mach 1 represents the speed of sound so Mach 1.5 signifies 1.5 times the speed of sound, while Mach 2 denotes twice the speed of sound. The Concorde could break the sound barrier easily and fly at a maximum cruising speed of Mach 2.04. But high speed didn't save it from being grounded and discontinuing flight operation. The tragic 2000 crash in Paris, killing all 109 passengers, further diminished confidence in the plane even though it was the only fatal accident in the 27-year operational history of Concorde. And since then, no commercial plane has surpassed Concorde's speed. You see, Concorde's high operational costs and limited capacity were issues, but the most important one were the noise concerns that led to its retirement in 2003. When an aircraft flies through the air, it creates pressure waves, like the ripples in the water that travel away from it at the speed of sound. The sound travels at 767 miles per hour, and when an aircraft exceeds that speed, the pressure waves compress and merge into shock waves. When this noise reaches the ground below, people perceive it as a loud thunderclap of sound. Since 1973, the FAA has even banned supersonic flight over land due to this disturbing sound, which is called a sonic boom. What happens is when shockwaves from an aircraft traveling faster than the speed of sound merge together before reaching the ground. It can be very disruptive and even damage the structures below. Sound waves can damage structures through a phenomenon called resonance. When the frequency of a sound matches a structure's natural frequency, resonance can lead to structural vibrations. An example of this is the vibrations we see in materials like glass, leading to visible shaking or even breakage. So now, NASA has developed a multi-million dollar jet that's going to revolutionize the way we travel. If you're curious about how this incredible supersonic jet was designed, you'll want to see what's coming up. But before we discuss that, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you'll be the first one to know if we post new content. Thank you, now let's continue. NASA's new creation is a quieter supersonic plane that will address both speed and sound concerns. This way, we can achieve supersonic speed air travel without causing the sonic boom. This project is called the Quest mission, short for Quiet Supersonic Technology. The project has two main objectives. First, 
to craft the X-59 research aircraft engineered with groundbreaking technology to reduce the thunderous sonic boom into a mere gentle thump, like the closing of a car door. Second, the X-59 will take flights over various U.S. communities to gather data on public reactions to how that supersonic flight sounds to them. Then, hand over the collected data to federal and international regulators to help and establish a noise standard for overland supersonic flights. If everything goes well, the technology will be further developed for passenger flights, and we could see the flight between London and New York reduced to just 90 minutes. According to NASA, it plans to carry out test flights for the X-59 plane as early as next year in 2025. The plane will fly over NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center and Edwards Air Force Base in California. To prove the quiet supersonic tech really works, the plane can handle real weather conditions, and most importantly, it's safe to fly in our skies. This is that groundbreaking, quiet supersonic aircraft sitting on the apron outside the project's prime contractor, Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works facility in Palmdale, California. Back in 2018, NASA granted Lockheed Martin a $247.5 million contract to create the X-59. The complete project, covering its design, construction, and testing, is estimated to be around $632 million and spans over eight years. Lockheed Martin and NASA introduced the X-59 after four years of development and testing with a video showing an assembled plane rolling out from the hangar last year in August and unveiling it on January 12, 2024. This special plane has been designed to travel at 1.4 times the speed of sound, which is less than that of Concorde at around 925 miles per hour while creating a less noisy sonic thump. It looks very compact and long, doesn't it? They say that it's not a regular prototype, but an experimental airplane. It measures 99.7 feet in length and has a 29.5 foot wingspan. The X-Plane is designed for a maximum takeoff weight of 32,000 pounds. It has a General Electric F414 engine, and the cockpit, ejection seat, and canopy are from a Northrop T-38 jet, and the landing gear is from an F-16. The most striking part is the abnormally long and tapered nose that makes up nearly a third of its length. The design helps break up the shock waves that usually lead to a sonic boom in supersonic planes. This long shape will obstruct all forward vision from the cockpit because the cockpit position has been changed to almost halfway down the aircraft without a front window. The Quest team developed an enhanced flight vision system called External Vision System which uses high-resolution cameras to provide a view on a 4K monitor in the cockpit, compensating for the lack of forward visibility. The engine has been placed on top to make its underside smooth and prevent shockwaves from merging behind the plane and causing the sonic boom. NASA hopes to carry out the first flight and make way for the possible development of a passenger plane based on the same design principles as the X-59. The X-59 plane holds the potential to revive supersonic air travel, which came to an end with the last flight of the Concorde 20 years ago. Currently, the Concorde can only be seen in museums, but the X-59 aims to carry on its legacy. X-59 will not only cause minimal noise, but also open up the possibilities of supersonic aircraft flying over land and not just the seas like Concorde. Many companies are eagerly waiting for this new technology to pass tests so that they can scale it up and bring supersonic passenger planes into the market. So when do you think we can expect to fly supersonic? Would you try it? Tell us in the comments section. That's it for this video. If you haven't already, please press that like button. And if you want to know more about the fascinating evolution of airplanes, check out this video on our channel. Thanks for watching everybody, and we'll see you soon.